I initially uh, got work in community radio where I was making jingle packages and that sort of thing. Went on to teaching there and making rather strange features. I, because my background is sound design, I used a lot of that in my radio features so they stood out from most other people's. I then got a job at my local radio BBC station, my local BBC radio station, and I was making features for a very atypical show that they had on the Brighton Festival. And my, should we say, skills were in great demand. And what I did stood out so much that, in fact, what happened was that one of my pieces was taken up and put on pick of the week, which was the first time they'd had anything like that taken up for 15 years. And subsequently, I had a few more pick of the weeks. I've also done sound design for radio plays and location rec recording in for radio. Initially, I started out as a musician. And from that, I taught myself how to use studios. And a lot of my early work was composing music. Then I worked for a computer company and made sound effects for DVDs and CDs and that sort of thing. Obviously recording voiceover and editing that a lot, which is where my skills with editing and Adobe Audition come from. When you're doing nothing else but editing for 14 hours a day, you get quite good at it. What you need to be a radio presenter would be the ability to say, to read words that sound like they come into your head for the first time, even though you're reading them. And that's a skill that can be learnt, but some people seem to be intuitive with it. The best route into the radio industry, well, I guess, is just to apply. What happened to me was that I started working for community radio, which is unpaid, and got recognised by people that this bloke really knows what he's doing. And from that, I got... Um, I was in charge of editing and production at Glastonbury, where they, they had a, a radio station um, before the one that they've got now. It was Radio Avalon. And I helped make features every day for... for a week or so, um, helped people that had never made features before, and it was generally reckoned to be the best ever Radio Avalon that, uh, that existed. From that, I also then got a job doing a similar sort of thing at Best of All, and from there, that's when I got... Um, someone noticed me and said, do you want to work for local radio, BBC radio? So that's how I got here. Same thing with BBC Radio, exactly the same. All you've got to do, well, all you've got to do, apply and the more experience you've got, the more chance you've got. The advantages with BBC would be that it's enormous and that if you're recognised locally, then quite possibly you could move on to national radio. If you don't get taken up when you apply which is quite likely, do lots of free work. Work for community radio. Um, RSLs are a brilliant idea to take on. RSLs, restricted service licences, uh, quite often they'll be for an event. Whilst you're at university, my advice would be to get as much experience as you can. The more experience you've got, the more chance you've got of someone taking you on. Presuming, of course, that you make a good fist of it when you do do your work experience. Once you've finished university, get yourself out there and let people know that you exist and do your best. Do free work. If you're any good within... A short while, you'll get to do lots of different roles and people might notice you. They might not say, do you want a job now? But maybe six months down the line, they'll think, oh, we need someone to do that. I wonder if that person that I met at BBC at the Brighton Festival can help. But make sure that you're reliable, not flaky, 
and that you don't ever let anybody down. If you let people down, you will never, ever work in radio.